beige curtains. No. Now, obviously, yeah. for both of you, for both of you, you're going to interpret our last segment in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Understand, but. I've seen it for years, right? Which is exactly what I laid out before. Mm. If your side isn't sufficiently conservative enough, we can see One Nation, we can see Palmer, preference discipline, see what happens, right? 2016, everyone. Um, They don't like what's being suggested by the alternative, preference discipline, good, we get 2019. Mm -hmm. How, How do you not sell the message, but listen to people like the workers that bloke was just talking about, who's trying to get information for the opposite side of politics. Mm. But where do you see the opportunities in what he just said? I look after the Hunter region of New South Wales, so there is nowhere more pertinent at the moment. And I've been spending a huge amount of time both in the in the federal seats of Newcastle, Shortland, Patterson, and of course, Hunter. And the, the reality is, some people like Joel Fitzgibbon are very good when it comes to coal. The problem is, is he is drowned out in his own party room because he does have a, a, a leader and let's hope he doesn't go by Chloe Shorten's husband going back to your... <laughs> yeah. I think Chloe might have something to say about that. Correct. But, you know, these these workers up in these regions are feeling abandoned by Labor because it's more about attracting the green vote in Marrickville than it has anything to do with looking at, at their job security and the security of the coal region. Now, I think it's incredibly interesting that Madeleine King's come out today and particularly opportune considering the upper how, you know the upper hunter state by-elections mm. on. Let's see how the, the tune is as we get closer to the election. But the Labor Party has moved away from its traditional bo- base and when you look at those workers, they're leaving the field for them. So, James, I mean, you saw what I just talked about in Queensland.